Hey there, we're back to business. So today we wanna to look at post CSS again, or more with regards to SAS and how it compares. Did a video last year, which was largely just looking at why post CSS was ranking so high on lists of things people wanna learn or why it's so popular, uh, when really it's something you kind of get out of the box, it works in the background and are the actual features and benefits are really that strong. It came up again recently on the Undefined podcast. I'll share a link, which is with uh, Evan Yu of Vue.js. And as a throwaway or quick rant, someone has sort of suggested, why is anyone dealing with SAS anymore? Why don't you just get post CSS, get uh, the nesting plugin, and there you go. You've got everything you need to get running and, and SAS is kind of outdated and done. And I just wondered whether that's really the convention now, or I, I kind of disagree with that somewhat. I mean, firstly, the, the idea that so one suggestion was that we, we don't need the variables anymore. We've got CSS variables, and so we don't need SAS anymore, which obviously offered those traditional uh, development environment variables. I kind of see them as completely different things. It's almost like a difference of a const versus let, in that ones used in SAS were really just values that you set to avoid repetitive typing. They were like configuration values. They're, they're much more like const. They're things you just set at the top of your page and you don't need once the, the files are built. CSS variables offer more scope. Scope being the term, you can use them as properties, which you might expect to change. They're much more like let variables that you can kind of adapt depending on different circumstances and scoping. So there's, there's risk in thinking that they're like for like and you can just expose those in a browser. So I kind of disagree with that premise that We've, we've solved the variables thing and we've replaced them so you can do away with the SAS ones. They still offer their own type of benefit. I suppose I'd, I'd take issue with the idea of saying that we've we've moved past SAS, that we're in a solution now that, that's much better or offers something that the previous didn't or is, is much easier to set up and run. I kind of disagree with that principle. I mean, firstly, it's worth pointing out that every uh, new innovation that comes along, be it a post CSS plugin or uh, CSS in JS library or whatever solution, the first thing it generally tries to do is replicate the SAS functionality because that's a mindset we've all got into. I mean, SAS is so successful that you generally just expect things like uh, a Vue.js or Next.js setup to allow you to do nesting out of the box because it's just how you kind of assume you'd work. And if you think about uh, things like methodology, it's just the idea of, of nesting your CSS into blocks and having block level objects for CSS is obviously inspired so much thinking about uh, naming structures and about scoping your CSS. So it's, it's had a legacy that's way beyond the actual specific uh, SAS environment. But really to the question of just, is it has it passed its day? Is there much more better out there? I recently just set up a, a new project that was about as root one as it gets with Parcel. Parcel.js is a super light uh, bundler that builds projects. You can just uh, add a, style file at the top of your page and it will automatically uh, minify it and include it in your page for you so it includes post css and the uh, css nano out the box which is fantastic in my code i can just go uh, run a few npm installs add post css nested and then in a post css config i can just add the two things i require and it will in the background just run those build it and keep rebuilding my css for me lovely and then if you go to the post css plugin directory it's quite easy to see where the appeal comes in because you have all these options maybe i'm going to get into some color functions or some future proofing or font stuff things i didn't even know about now suddenly you're this kind of post css gourmet chef who's gonna tailor pick your stuff and start influencing and optimizing things you didn't even have an opinion on before and you start realizing that that must really appeal to lots of developers who love the idea of being able to have a, a bespoke setup with lots of configuration and lots of exciting uh, transformations you can do on your css but that kind of feels like a path to a kind of rocky road or, or kind of over optimization i said it in the previous video about uh, auto prefix who is largely redundant future CSS is a real overkill I feel like a lot of these things are for features that people aren't going to use or don't need to but will bundle in any way just to demonstrate their abilities it has been pointed out to me that purge CSS is very useful if you're using some sort of big library like a tailwind because it will just strip out the things you don't need and while I agree that's probably really useful um, there's still potential issues that I guess if 
you are adding classes in some programmatic way, it could be missed along the way. But yeah, that's probably one use case where you'd say a post CSS setup is, is particularly beneficial. The thing is just really that question of, are you making things easier for developers? Are you offering benefits that way outstrip the SaaS ones? And are you genuinely getting to the point where SaaS is seen as a, uh, a less viable option? And I still don't really think that's the case. I mean, interestingly, that project I set up in, in Parcel, which was about as root one as it gets, uh, immediately ran into issues because of the error was about uh, post CSS 8 was not working with the auto prefixer and I had to start digging through Stack Overflow and then I had to manually set different versions to get them to play together. And this is not a problem you would get with SAS just because it's tried and tested. It's been around for a long time. It's really just the one binary you install to solve all your problems. Whereas in an NPM ecosystem, you're likely going to get version mismatches from time to time. So it's that thing of, yes, it's newer, but you might have just introduced newer problems for people. So really, it's, it's not a case of saying there's no value to post CSS, and I can see a lot of people clearly benefit from it. I just kind of feel like the um, the way we've sort of gone of sort of saying, this thing's here, the old thing is out, is paying disrespect to the, to the value of SaaS, its current usage, and the fact that it clearly still solves a lot of problems for people that they've not needed to shop around and go elsewhere. It'll be interesting to see uh, how those things evolve and I guess SAS will eventually kind of wind down because it's not a big continually building thing but it's, uh, its legacy will definitely reach far beyond its specific technology. But anyway, I'd really like to hear any feedback, any views people have on that because of um, it could be that people have made a very clear decision about why they want to switch to post CSS and uh, there could be something really important there that I, I'm, I'm just not getting. <laughs> Let me know. Thanks a lot. <laughs>